Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Mike, this is my whiteboard, and today we're going over the trade checklist for a long put diagonal spread. Now, just like the commercial you just saw, we're, took it, we're talking about getting long a put and selling a put against that to reduce our cost basis and create a diagonalized spread. So that sounds like a lot, but we can break it down very simply for you on the next slide here. So the very first thing we need to know when we're talking about a poor man's covered put or a long put diagonal spread is that we're dealing with two different options in two different expiration cycles. So what we're doing is we're purchasing an in the money put and let's say it's in July for this example, and we're looking to sell an out of the money put, which is a put below the stock price, in a different expiration. And we always set this up where we have our long option in a further out expiration than our short option, in this case, which would be in May. So we're using that short option to reduce the cost basis of our long option here. But since our long option is in July, it's going to have a lot more value than our short option in May. And for that reason, it's going to be routed for a debit. So when we're looking at this strategy, it's a great bearish strategy, and it's a great way to replace the covered put strategy. So the risk profile graph would look very similar to a covered put strategy, except for the fact that we don't have undefined risk to the upside. If we remember, a covered put is simply just selling 100 shares of stock and selling a put against that to reduce the basis of those, net, those short shares. But since we're short shares, we have unlimited risk to the upside. When we're short shares, we want the stock price to go down. But if we're short shares and the stock price goes up, of course there's no cap to where a stock can go. And for that reason, we do have that unlimited risk to the upside. But with this strategy, since we're purchasing this long option here and we're selling an option against it, even if the stock price doubles, we're not going to lose more than the debit we paid for this strategy. So it's a good replacement strategy for the covered put and it gives us a nice return on capital since we're using a lot less capital to purchase this put as we would for selling those shares outright. And another thing to point out with this strategy is that it's ideal for low IV environments. So I wanted to do this strategy today because we're in such a low volatility environment and we've seen the market rally up so high that this could be a great strategy to maybe deploy in an environment like this. I've got one on right now in QQQ, which is the ETF that tracks the NASDAQ. And if you missed that one, you can check it out on the Doe Follow page and see exactly what I did. But I have a, good, a strong feeling that this is exactly what might happen in the queues or maybe in the general market, which is why I've got this strategy deployed. So my assumption and the assumption when deploying the strategy is that we have a bearish one. We want this long option to gain more value and we want ideally this short option to expire in May and hopefully we can deploy another short option in the next cycle. So we have this one in, in July here, and let's say the stock price goes in between these, this range here, and at the May expiration, this one expires out of the money. Now I'm left with a long July put, and maybe I can look to sell another option in June, and then maybe another one in July to continually reduce my cost basis of this long July put that I have here. Because we are purchasing the long option in July and we're routing this trade for a debit, anytime we're routing a trade for a debit, we want to see a low IV environment, especially for this trade because implied volatility, an expansion in implied volatility or an increase in implied volatility is going to increase the value of our July option much more than the value of our May option. If we remember, there's going to be more extrinsic value in longer dated options, and since the July option is going to have a longer expiration date than our May option, there's going to be more extrinsic value in that July option than this May option here. And for that reason, an increase in implied volatility, and if we remember implied volatility is an aspect of that extrinsic value, an increase in that implied volatility is going to increase the value of our July option much more than that of the May option, which is why this is a long Vega trade. So we want the IV environment to be low so that we have a better chance of our implied volatility increasing or a better assumption that our implied volatility would increase, which would increase the value of this spread. But let's take a look at what might happen when the stock goes down, stock stays the same, or stock goes up on the next slide. So when the stock goes up, this is really the worst case scenario for this strategy. Number one, the contracts are going to lose value because even though this option is in the money and this option is out of the money, 
we are going to see both of those options move further out of the money. So the stock price is going to move closer to this, op this option here. And if it keeps going up, we're going to see both of those options be out of the money. And as we know, at expiration, options that are out of the money are worthless. So if we paid a debit for this and the stock price comes all the way up here where both of these options would be out of the money, then we would lose all of the value that we paid for this strategy. So both of the contracts would lose value and IV could contract. So we normally see this relationship with the market where most times when the market is going up, implied volatility is coming down, just like you see here. The S&Ps are at 2100 and the VIX is right around 12, which is very, very low for the last six months or wherever it's been in the last six months. But on the flip side, when we look at the stock going down, we're going to get that value in both of the options moving in the money, but also we could see implied volatility increase. So of course, our long put would gain value if the stock goes down. And that's because it's moving more and more in the money because the stock price would be moving down and creating more of a distance between our, our long strike here and where the stock price is. And even though we would see potential losses on our short put, our long put here is going to completely offset any intrinsic value losses we see on that short put. So even if the short put is five points in the money at expiration, we're gonna see five points of value added to our long put here. So it's totally offset in terms of intrinsic value. Really all we're doing is looking to sell that put out of the money to reduce our cost basis on order entry. And really we're all, all we're caring about in this option is just that extrinsic value that we receive. So when the stock stays the same, the short put will definitely help offset the losses on the long put. We do need to remember that we did purchase a put that's in the money here, and it has a negative theta effect. In other words, as time passes, and if there's no movement in implied volatility or the stock price that go in our favor, that option is going to lose value over time steadily. And also, the short put is going to gain, it's going to lose value, but that's gonna be good for us because remember, we sold this option. So we want that option to lose value that we, so that we can potentially buy it back for a lower price, or we can see it just expire out of the money worthless. So with the time decaying and the options decaying over time because of that, we do see our short, short put helping us offset that loss on the long put, but really we want IV to expand here. So the ideal scenario is that the stock goes down and we see the long option gaining value and also hopefully an increase in implied volatility, which will help the position. And the worst case scenario is that the stock goes up, but again, this is a, a strategy that is defined risk. We don't have that unlimited upside when we compare it to something like a covered put. So in this situation, even if the stock price doubles, we can't lose more than the debit paid for the strategy. But what are some ways to think about the strategy from perspective? Well, we'll get back into that on the next slide here. The very first thing we need to consider is the break-even. On the last few trader checklists, we had a solid break-even calculation where we could totally know exactly what that is. Unfortunately for this strategy, we can't really calculate our break-even accurately because of the fact that we have that implied volatility changing differently with these different expirations. So since our July option is going to be affected differently with implied volatility changes than our May option that we sold, we're going to have different aspects in different ways that both of those values are going to change. And for that, we can't really calculate our break even. We could calculate basically just the credit that we received from this option and basically where that strike is and measure it against our long debit that we paid to see a pseudo break even. But really, I don't even want to do that because if implied volatility changes drastically, that number is going to be rendered useless. So I don't really look at the break even calculation for this specific strategy. I just make sure that I'm comfortable with whatever value I paid to enter this trade because I know that that's the most I can possibly lose. For the implied volatility factor and the environment we want it to be in, the lower the IV, the better. And that's because we're going to be able to not only buy this spread for a lower value than if we bought it in a higher implied volatility environment, 
But also, the lower IV we see, if we believe that implied volatility is mean reverting, when we see implied volatility dip low, we should expect to see it come back up over some time in the future. There's no specific time frame that we're looking for, but generally, if we see implied volatility come down, we would like to see it come back up, and this strategy would benefit from that. We look to close this strategy at 25 to 50% of our debit paid or we look for that return on the capital we put down. So since we can't really calculate our break even, we also can't really calculate our max profit. Because of that unknown factor of where implied volatility will be at this May expiration, we will never really know what the value of our July put will be. We can totally calculate the intrinsic value of that put just by determining the difference between the stock price and the strike price here, but implied volatility plays a role in that extrinsic value, and since we never know where implied volatility will be at expiration, we can't really know what our max profit is. So really what we're looking for here is to close this strategy at 25 to 50% of our debit paid. So let's just pretend I paid $5 for this strategy, or $500. I would basically be looking to profit about $250 on the maximum or a little, a little less there. So basically I'm just taking that debit, dividing it by two to get that 50% profit mark, and that gives me $250. So if I purchase this spread for $500, I would look to sell this spread for $750. That's what would get me that 50% profit, or if you're comfortable with something a little bit less, if we get there quickly, then we can be that can be accepted as well. One thing to consider with this specific strategy and any diagonal spread for that matter is that we don't trade this in volatility products. Things like VXX or UVXY, we don't, we don't diagonalize any sort of spread. Anytime we look at different calendar expirations with a volatility product, we need to remember that those products are very different in the sense that those expirations act as their own separate products. It's not like I was doing a diagonal spread in, let's say, Apple, where there is a mathematical correlation between the expirations. So I know that one of them can't completely blow out one side and the other. So when I'm looking at a volatility product, if I sell an option in May and I purchase an option in July, I need to realize that this option that I sold naked in May will act totally different than the July option in July. So what I really need to know is that if I'm dealing in a volatility product, we never really look to diagonalize or calendarize any sort of spread. We keep it in the same expiration cycle because this option could explode and leave us with a massive loss, while this option could stay the same and not cover ourselves. So when we're looking at volatility products, we don't ever use a diagonal spread or calendar spread for that reason. So this has been a lot, but let's wrap it all up with some takeaways for you. The very first takeaway we've got is that this is a bearish covered put replacement strategy. If you're not comfortable with the naked 100 shares that we would be shorting and having that unlimited upside risk, this is definitely a strategy that is a great replacement because we can't lose more than the debit paid as long as we're not trading this in a volatility product. Secondly, a low IV environment is going to be best, not only because we can purchase this spread for a lower value, but also if we see implied volatility expand, we're going to benefit as well because that long July option is going to be gaining much more value than that short May option would lose. And another thing to consider is the setup of this strategy. We like to cover the extrinsic value with the sale of the short option. So if I'm looking at that July option and I see that I can calculate that there's $6 of intrinsic value and $1 of extrinsic value. I'm gonna look at that $1 of extrinsic value and I'm gonna to look to sell an option that covers that value. That puts me in a positive theta situation where even though I would be losing value or $1 of value on that long option, if I can collect more than a dollar on my short option, that gives me a positive theta situation where I can close that spread if the stock price doesn't move at all and applied volatility doesn't move at all for more than I paid for it. I can sell it back to the market for its intrinsic value, but if I can pay less than intrinsic value on that long option by selling that short option for more than the extrinsic value on the long option, that puts us in a good situation. 
And if you're looking for defensive tactics on this strategy, check out my previous whiteboard, which is called Three Poor Man's Covered Put Adjustments. I'll even include it in the description below when this video is archived. So thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Mike. If you've got any questions or feedback at all, shoot me an email or you can tweet me at DoTraderMike. Stay tuned. We've got Jim Schultz coming up next.